Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we will be reading and considering today. Please read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because my mouth will go quicker than my brain, and vice versa. Okay? So read along with me in the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse. Okay? Today is the fifth. And with what we are going to be discussing today, I, I think this is actually kind of meat. But in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3 on to verse 6. For the lips of a strange woman, strange woman, strange woman drop as an honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil now right away you saints it's like oh the strange woman again huh? now for application in our lives could be an actual physical literal strange woman strange meaning you don't know her or as reference, I believe, a, a reference onto a whore. A whore? Yes! You know, Rome, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Yes. Yes, a strange woman. Let's continue. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Chernobyl as I understand, is Rus for Wormwood. As I understand. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> Sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. And the wages of sin is death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou, lest thou shouldest ponder, think. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Movable. Movable. Not, can't pin down, or you think you got them and then... Movable, put in your head the vision of a, a snake or a serpent slithering. Yeah, have thought so. Yeah. And is it any coincidence, which I do not believe in, you go to Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5. And we read verses 1 on to verse 3. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Dispensational difference. Okay, this was written during the dispensation of the law, where they had a physical temple. Okay, today, God dwelleth not in temples made by hands. Okay? But our instruction in righteousness. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools who say in the heart there is no God. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, Brad. What's your name? You know what? You can get your little pen. <laughs> and if you're able, write your name right there. <laughs> Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven. And thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of busyness. 
and a fool who says in his heart, there is no God, a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. I'm always uh, reminded of what is known as the Amplified Bible, where Jesus wept. Just an example. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Two words. That Amplified Bible, which is written by men, of course, the Amplified Bible, where Scripture uses two words, Jesus wept, would use a total of nine words to describe Jesus wept. <laughs> okay? Okay, that's, that's a, an example that I could give you. Okay? 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. I am using a brand new set of scriptures that I literally, I, a little wabbit for you, I have this box of scriptures in the closet there that in my decease, if I go home before like say dear brother uh, Alexander Hartley, um, he, he will get the box of scriptures if I if, don't get rid of them. You know. But anyway, so bear with me, okay? 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. And then we're going to get into what, we're, what this video is going to be about. You're going to see the title, and I haven't figured out a thumbnail yet, but 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5 on verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. In the faith, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Once delivered. Okay? Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And if you're saved, you've come to the Lord on his terms. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you called upon his name and he saved you. You're saved with the Lord himself. You're sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord lives within you. Okay? The Lord lives within the saint. Absolutely. Sealed until the day of redemption. Catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession. As it says in Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Yes. You come to the Lord His terms. You know, you don't boot the door out the way and then climb up some other way, you numbskull. No, 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 no. You go to the Lord His way, the way of the cross, which is death to you first, <laughs> which is why so many people avoid it. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. You're eternally secure. God lives within you. Okay? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Meaning <laughs> we're saved. Okay. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. In the eyes of who? In the eyes of who? See, one could get confused by that statement there, but wait a minute, wait a minute. If Christ is in you, you're saved. You're not a reprobate. Okay? You could have you could have some thoughts that would point to being reprobate. Yes, you can. But you're not reprobate if you're saved. You're not. How can you be? Okay? How can you be? So, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. So wait a minute. Okay, if we have, if Christ is in us, then you know, like it says in verse 5, except ye be reprobates. So you ain't saved, you're a reprobate. That's the way that works, okay? But, so then verse 7 there, then verse 7, what's going on? In whose eyes are we saints reprobate? Christians. Lost people. For we can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Faith. 
faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus. Now I gotta I gotta share a little bit from um, of this that I got from a brother. Uh, just just a little of it. Uh, who has just now um, sent me some stuff? Okay. Alrighty. Uh, one one second. One second. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, brother. You go ahead and leave what you just sent me in the comment section. Okay. Go ahead. I want to share this with you. Um, now these quotes came from a video. That I couldn't watch that, brother. I can't. I couldn't watch that. It was grotesque. Okay, but if you, brother, you want to put the the video that you sent me in the, the comment section, you can do that. Okay, but I want to share this with you because there is this very, very deceptive deception <laughs> going on um, that has been there for a while, but. I got to tell you, it, it, it reminded me when I read this, and I talked about this with uh, several other brethren. When you go to Revelation, Revelation 17, which is talking about Rome, Mr. Lying Fart, okay? Verse 6. Verse 6 in Revelation chapter 17. And I saw the woman, Rome, Drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, some people will look at this as like admiration. What, John admired the whore? Rome? No, 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 no. You, you do the word study on that yourself. But John, John, like Daniel, I personally believe, we're given a vision of what this time is. Personally, I believe that Daniel was given a vision, I personally believe this, where he actually saw things that pertain unto today with his own eyes. You know, the Lord could do that kind of stuff, okay? Because remember, the Lord, atheists don't understand this. The Lord, here, here's our time, the Lord lives outside of it. The Lord's not bound by our time. Okay? So he could show someone what's going to happen in a thousand years if he wanted to. Okay? <laughs> okay? Be aware of that. But I believe that Daniel, like John, were given glimpses of what was today. And John seen Rome and how Rome and the devils are able to get away with the kind of deception that they are today. We've talked about this before. We've talked, and this is, and this is something that is just to me a, a source of wow, wonder. It's like, how are these devils able to get away with some of the deception that they're getting away with today? And we've talked about this before because the, the people are not being given the scriptures. They're they're not even being given a Bible. They're being taught that you know if it feels good, do it. They're taught to trust in someone if they got a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall. Okay, the conditioning of the people, of especially of these Christians, the conditioning, the wearing away of the stones, which have been going on for literally centuries. Okay, we're seeing the end result where these devils are able to get away with stuff. Where you and I, as saints, we're like. How is this possible? How is this possible that people are that these guys are able to get away with this? How? How? Well, you know, our apostle says it quite best in Second Timothy. Like I said, I am using a, a set of scriptures that literally just came out of the box. <laughs> so in um, in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 and 2 okay that's all I, that's all we need to read to get this point across this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves 
And Christianity is about that. It's about, you know, uplifting your own self. Giving you fuel for being a lover of your own self. Okay? Any of you, especially you atheists, you look at this joke called Christianity and you'll be like, you know, how pretentious. It really is, isn't it? It's really pretentious. Okay? But, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come and <laughs> we are in the last days. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. Boasters, proud, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Let's stop right there. How are people, how are they getting away with this? Hmm. I wonder. But, okay, I, I want to read this to you. I want to read this to you. Okay. This is, a, this is what a brother sent me. And when you... Now, as I read this, pay attention. Pay attention. Because it's subtle. It's real subtle. Quote, We are not capable of the faith it takes to gain the grace of God. It's not of yourself, but of Jesus and his finished work. Did you catch that? See, sometimes, more often than not, you know, like for with, the, with deceivers, some are so brazenly obvious that it's like, dude, get, get. But then you got people like Mr. Fig who takes time to figure out that, oh, wow, this guy's lost. This guy's lost in a deceiver. It takes time. But see, the, the premise of just believe and receive, it's muy rápido. But sometimes you got to go, alto, <laughs> alto, uno momento, por favor. <laughs> Senor, uno momento, por favor, alto. <laughs> and like, okay, wait a minute. Let's slow it down. And let's look at what's being said. You know, sometimes with some uh, verses of scripture, you know, you, you read through it. But when you stop and look at the scripture, look at it, how it's worded, how it's formed, syllable upon syllable, precept upon precept. When you look at it, it's like, ooh, wait a minute. So let's read this again. There's a few here. But you you got to hear this, okay? This is deception that is full of wonder. It's like, wow, this, this, is, this is Jesuitical. This is a level of deception that would make the Jesuits happy. Okay? So let's, let's read this again. Quote, We are not capable of the faith it takes to gain the grace of God. To gain. To gain the grace of God. And as much as I love... Uh, throwing dung at these fake gracers. Even these fake gracers get this one right. Gain the grace of God. Grace is the better, blessing the lesser, simply put. Hmm. Okay? We are not capable of the faith it takes to gain the grace of God. It's not of yourself, but of Jesus and his finished work. Did you hear that? Let's continue. Here it is. And here, now pay attention to this. Because echoes of Calvinist for you saints. Okay? We are not saved by our own faith in God. Uh-oh. But it is the faith of Jesus that saves us once we believe in him.
Listen. Listen to this. Okay? Listen. Did you catch it? Did you catch that? Did you catch it? Hmm? See, Calvinism in the Calvinist video will be in the description box. Calvinism in a nutshell is elect and non elect. That God elects certain people to go to heaven without anything. That they I mean they could like like that ridiculous cross dressing Calvinist. Okay. Yeah, he claims to be a Calvin, you know, he's a Calvinist, so that gives him the right because he's elect. He's going to heaven no matter what. So this imbecile can walk around dressed as a woman and is validated by these fake racers like smack and jerk. Hey, bloke, what are you doing with that? Uh, never mind, never mind. Anyway, let's read this again. We are not saved by our own faith in God. But it is the faith of Jesus that saves us once we believe in him. Mm. Did you catch it there? Let's continue. We are not justified through our own faith but through the faith of Jesus Christ. We are not justified through our own faith, but through the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, a fake gracer is going to hear something like that. It's like, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. Because to the fake gracer, the sleazy believers, what is the object of their faith? The object of the faith of the fake gracer is faith itself. Like the um, uh, uh, like the metaphysical guys, like the, the Christian science guys, and like the name it and claim it guys, the Pentecostal guys. You know, the object of their faith is faith, them, faith itself. Okay, that's the object of their faith. Okay, all right. So a fake gracer would hear this. Uh, I mean, just thinking, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We are not justified through our own faith, but through the faith of Jesus Christ. Do you, do you, do you get what's being implied here? Hold on, hold on. Now here's where it gets really tricky with these guys. The faith of man does not have any part in our salvation. And they quote Ephesians 2.8. Through 10. Now, I, I don't know if uh, our brother put that in there uh, to just like, you know, what they're talking about. But let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Okay? Ephesians 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Always add verse 10. Okay? Ephesians 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ah, see what they're doing? See, the not of ourselves, verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. And there's the period. There's the period. Okay? So, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. What is that, a semicolon? And that not of yourselves, colon, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The faith of man does not have any part in our salvation. It is the faith of Jesus that is given to us when we believe in him. And then they quote, telltale sign, Romans 3, 22, and we'll get to that. It's the faith of Jesus Christ that saves, and not our own faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who saves us. But see, the answer to God's grace is our faith. Do you catch what they're implying here? Do you, do you see what they're saying? Mr. Calvinist? They're saying, okay, we believe in, in Jesus. Then 
It's the faith, the actual faith of Christ himself that's in us. It's not our faith. It's not our own faith. It's not our answer to God's grace. We don't save ourselves. No, we do not. No. But see, one, 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 one second. Yeah, I got to do this with this video, and several of you really liked this. When it comes to salvation, yeah, God ain't forcing you to be saved. Okay? All right. And see, if it isn't our faith, our faith on the Lord, but His faith, not our own. Think about it. Isn't that coercion? Isn't that forced? Or isn't that elect and non-elect? Do you see it? Hmm? Oh, and don't, and don't worry. Well, we're going to get to Romans 3 here. Okay? So, these individuals are telling you that it's not our faith, but it's Jesus' faith. So then, think about that. What about someone who's not saved? Well, they don't have the faith of Jesus. You mean they're not elect, huh? Ooh. Ooh. Subtle. I, like I said, like I told a brother, it's like, this is, this is pretty slick. This is some pretty slick stuff. Okay? And now they quote now here Galatians 2. 16, okay? Well, first, let's go to Romans. Romans 3. The, <laughs> the, these, the fake gracer, you know, they love Romans 3. They do. Uh, they do. They love Romans 3. But they never, <laughs> they never like to read the entirety of Romans 3. They, they like to cherry pick a certain spot of it. Romans 3. We're going to be reading verses 19 on to verse 28. Okay, let's look at this. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. There we see the, the inference about the law. Okay, and in uh, Ephesians 2, okay, in Ephesians 2 there, okay, where it says... Uh, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, semicolon or colon, whatever that is, one of you correct me. And put it in the comment section too. So when someone says, watches this, they're like, Brad, that's a semicolon or whatever. If I got it mixed up, someone, brother, someone, okay? Anyway, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is not saying to you that your faith isn't your own faith. Okay. And of course, it is the Lord who does the saving. But see, people, if it isn't our faith, but the Lord's faith, then that means what? What does that mean? Think about that. Is God holding a gun to your head? Is Satan holding a gun to your head? Don't worry, bloke, this isn't going to go off, so... Kayate. Huh? Huh? You talk about a subtle deception, boy. You talk about a subtle deception. And the period is in verse 9. So from verse 8 on to verse 9, it's a continuation. And it says not of ourselves. We can't earn it. We can't earn anything in the Lord. It is by His grace through our faith. Our faith is the answer to His grace. That does not mean we save ourselves. No, 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 no. Because what is, what is the object of our faith? Who is the object of our faith? 
our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And see, when you twist that to say that it's not your faith, but it's the Lord's, well, then that must mean you're elect. That must mean you're special, huh? Do you see it? Do you see how subtle this is? Like I said, I, like I said, I, I, I consider this as like, wow, man. <laughs> this is, uh, you talk about her ways are movable. You talk about subtle. But see, Chris, and now you hear that, right? You hear this, and it's like, well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? But is it the truth? Okay. And verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Mm. Okay. God is the one who saves us, absolutely. But see, the answer to his grace is our faith. Because if it isn't our faith, then it's the Lord's faith. And then if it's not, if it's if if it's not our faith but the Lord's, then we're a robot, aren't we? Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Salvation is not forced upon you. Salvation is not of gunpoint, dear friend. Not at all. Okay? And the minute you start saying that, well, it's you have you have the actual literal faith of Jesus in you. So and what's the net will say, hey, since it's not my faith but the Lord's, then hey, I could put on a wig and dress up like a woman. Hey, it's not my faith. Okay, it's not me. So I'm free to do whatever. Oh, you see how dangerous this is? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Okay, let, let's continue here. In Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? But now, not keeping the law, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Scripture. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe there is no difference by faith of Jesus Christ okay he is the object of our faith our Lord Jesus Christ he is the one our faith is anchored upon not that his faith is the one that is in us. No. Because, hey, think about this. If it's not our faith, Jesus never sinned, did he? Hmm? Jesus never sinned. So what? If it's not your faith, but the actual Lord's faith in you, well then, are you sinlessly perfect? Hmm? Hmm? Can you raise the dead? <laughs> This is, this is, this is a uh, wow. This is wow, man. This is, and see how Christians don't, it's like, wait a minute. Because it sounds good, doesn't it? But see, if it's the Lord's actual faith that is in you, then why are you still sinning? Jesus never sinned. He always did everything that pleased the Father. Why are you? Why are you even considering temptation? Are you a God all of a sudden? Ooh. 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if the faith of... if Je Now, Jesus lives within us. Yes, he does. But see, he's not forcing you to do things his way. We have talked about free will at, at length. But see, while this sounds good, it's removing what? And hey, you fake gracers, come on now. You devils, even you got to admit this. This is taking away free will. This, what is being said here, is God holding a gun to your head. This is, hid this is hidden, deceptive Calvinism. That's what this is. It's Calvinistic. It's Calvinistic. And when you compare what that nut job Calvin actually wrote with the Calvinism that is today, Calvinism is, is satanic, okay? Calvinism is not the gospel, okay? But stay away from Calvinism. But the Calvinism that Calvin himself taught, you know, in his, uh, the whatever, whatever, the, 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 whatever that book is of his, I can't think of it right now, okay? The doctrines of the Christian faith or whatever it was, okay? What Calvin, way back then, actually taught is far removed from the hyper-Calvinism and stuff like that that is happening today, okay? A pure, as it were, Calvinist, if they were to encounter this nut job, cross-dressing Calvinist would be like, what are you doing? But see, these are movable without Kenneth Nagel. Let's continue in Romans 3. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the justifier of them which believe in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Where is boasting then? Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. And the problem that you run into with the Calvinist. Well, I'm elect. I'm elect. I'm going to heaven no matter what I do. I'm going to heaven no matter how I, how I make the Lord look like sin. I'm going to heaven no matter how I justify it. Now, a saint, that is the case. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But see, this thing of boasting, well, it's not my faith. It's not my faith. It's the Lord's faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See, it says, uh, of Jesus. And see, these guys are twisting it to tell you that it's not your answer to God's grace. Even, even the sleazy believers gets this one right. Okay? This is, this is veiled, very deceptive Calvinism. I mean, it really is. It really is. Okay? It, it really is. Uh, it, it, it really is. Okay? And that and that's the and that's the extent of what uh, their brother uh, said. So, okay. Now go to Galatians two. Galatians chapter two. We want sixteen on to twenty one. Faith of Jesus Christ. Okay. It appears uh, we're going to look at the appearances of this. Okay. We're not going to look at faith in Jesus Christ because that's self-explanatory. But see, this thing of faith of Jesus. This faith of Jesus, meaning that he is the object of our faith. He, okay? And faith in Jesus, we're trusting in what he has done, that he is going to take us to heaven with him. Okay? All right? Very subtle, very dangerous deception here. 
Okay? Galatians 2, verses 16 to close. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. See, in the dispensation under the law, the law is not a faith. But see, your faith was in God that he would honor you for doing what was according to the law. Okay? All right? So from going from faith to faith, as it says in Romans, okay, going from faith to faith. All right? What was the faith? What, what was the object of your faith in the Old Testament on the law? It wasn't God. But see... You would get that by keeping the law. And no man can keep the law perfectly. Unless you're Mark the Messenger. <laughs> okay? All right? So, so, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, faith in the law that God would honor you through keeping the law. Okay? And faith was, and the law was written. You didn't need faith in it. But see, your faith was in God that he would honor you for keeping the law. Okay? And no one could keep the law perfectly. And like I said, unless you're Mark the Messenger or something like that. All right? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Meaning, your faith is in him, on him, of him, meaning him. Him. Not that it's His faith working through you. No. 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 No, 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 no. No, because then you would be a robot. You'd be a machine. You would be elect without anything. Because again, because again, because again, again, God doesn't force salvation on you. And what these people are teaching is for salvation. You, you don't even have to have any faith. Don't worry about it because it's not yours to begin with. And of course, see, our faith can waver. Yes, it can. But see, when you come to the Lord His way and He saves you, He seals you. Okay. But then again, okay, if it's the faith of Jesus, then why are you still sinning? I don't sin anymore. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you go to hell, buddy. Okay? Hmm? See, follow this through. Okay? Okay, if, if the faith that's in me is actually of the Lord himself, then, then why is there... Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. The faith of Christ. Okay? Faith of Christ. Meaning, everything is anchored on Him. Okay? Our faith is anchored on Him. And see, there's something that these guys are not intuiting. Obviously, and why is that? Because people are not being taught the scriptures. They're not being encouraged to read the scriptures. That's why they're being able to get away with this nonsense. Okay? That's knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now, look at that verse, verse 17. Is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So wait a minute. If it's Christ's faith in us, why are we still sinning? We have the mind of Christ, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Then why are we still sinning? 
For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Our, it's not our salvation. It's Christ's salvation. It's God's salvation. But see, our faith, our faith is anchored on Christ. Okay? And take away the faith, the, our answer to God, then it's forced then it's coerced. And like I said, there are, we've talked about the free will thing at, at length, in depth. Okay? From beginning to end, free will. But if it's Christ's faith, then where's free will? Well, you have free will when you believe. Well, then if, okay, we, we do have free will. Yes, we do. But, See, if it were Christ's faith in you, if it was the Lord who was giving you this faith unto salvation, then you're a robot. Then salvation is coerced, forced. And that lends itself to what? Calvinism. Calvinism. Galatians 3, verses 22 on to verse 29. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Yes. Faith. Yeah. Because our faith is anchored on him, we came to him his way. He saved us and he lives within us. But see, he's not... He's not doing it for us, meaning the faith. That is our answer to His grace. Okay? Because He's not for... See, the Lord doesn't force you to live according to the Scriptures. You have to make the right choices. What these guys are saying is taking the choice out of it. And hence, that means what? You're a robot. That means, then I guess Calvinism is true, isn't it? Isn't it? And no, it's not. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now stop! If it is the way that these individuals are telling you, wouldn't that, wouldn't that mean we're still under a schoolmaster then? Hello? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ Jesus. Trusting in what he has done. Yes, but see, our faith is on Him. He is our hope. He is our faith. And He has paid for my sins. The difference. See that? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Put on. Like a garment? Put on. Going after. Okay? Because again, again, I, I, you, a lot of you really enjoyed when I did this. Especially the bloke who hopes that it goes off. <laughs> but again, God isn't forcing you to do anything. He isn't. It would be nice if he did, right? Come on, come on now. 
would be nice. It would be nice if he did. It would be nice if I didn't sin. <laughs> oh! Right, brother? Sister? But yet, we sin every day. Look at Paul. Romans 7, brother, remember? Are you, st are you reading that every day? Okay? Would be nice. But see, if he did it for us like in that equation, then we would be a robot. We have to make the right choices. Salvation is not of us. It isn't. But the minute you start saying that the faith that we have, the answer to his grace, isn't ours, then who does it belong to? The Lord? Then we're a robot. Then we're elect and non-elect. And I guess Calvinism is true then. See how dangerous this is? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. There's another one now. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. During the time of Jacob's trouble, and during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is faith and works. It's not by grace through faith. During the time of Jacob's trouble. The only ones who are eternally secured during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Except for the 144,000 Jews. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Hmm, no soul annihilation of that is. Huh? And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever, whosoever, Christian, receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever. Verse 9. If any man, whosoever, if any man. Okay? Eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Well, what if the 144,000? Read about the 144,000. They ain't going to be... No. <laughs> okay? Nice try, though. Nice try. Okay? Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus. You know, you and I, saints, we are of Jesus. We belong unto him. We are of his house. And this thing of of. And see, this is what, this is the subtleness of the deception. And see, because Christians, people, have been worn like the water wearing away the stones over years centuries, decades, whatever, against the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Devils are able to get away with this kind of stuff. And like I said, what I read to you, for what my brother said, our brother, excuse me, our brother, um, sounded good. But when you put on the brakes, and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. What do you do with your faith? Your faith. What do you do with your faith? First of all, before we get to that, we're going to look at the appearances of your faith. 
okay? <laughs> All right? But before we do that, uh, get ready, Matthew chapter 9, okay? We're just, we're going to look at this, and remember, Matthew chapter 9 is before what? The death, burial, and resurrection, okay? But before we do that, <laughs> okay? All right? Of. Of. Of from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now, see, you might be thinking, Brad, that's kind of petty, isn't it? Look at the subtleness of the deception that just shared with you that these devils are doing. According to these devils, okay, that means you're elect. What are you? Your own little God? Of, from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. From or out of, proceeding from as the cause, source, means, author, or agent bestowing. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, 1 Corinthians 15. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, Joshua XI, okay? I think that's 11. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, Lamentations 3. The whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Proverbs XVI. Go inquire of the Lord for me. 2 Chronicles 30 XXXIV. The holy thing that shall be born of thee, of thee, Luke uh, chapter 1. Hence, of is the sign of the genitive case, the case that denotes production as the Son of Man. The son proceeding from man. Proceeded from man. This is the primary sense. Although we now say produced by man. Part of these were slain. That is a number separate. For part denotes a division. The sense then is a number from or out of the whole were slain. So also, some of these were slain. That is, some from out of the others. I have known him of old, of a, or of a child. That is, from old times, from a child. He is of the race of kings. That is, descended from kings. He is of the noble blood or birth, or of, or of ignoble origin. No particle of matter or no body can move of itself. That is, by force or strength proceeding from itself, derived from itself. The quarrel is not now of fame and tribute or of wrong done, wrongs done. That is, from fame or wrongs as the cause. And we may render it concerning about relating to. Of this little had he, this little he had some to spare, that is, some from the whole, it may be rendered out of. Of all our heroes, thou canst boast alone, that is, thou alone from the number of heroes, this may be rendered among. The best of men, the most renowned of all, that is, the best from the number of men from from hmm. interesting the most renowned from the whole denoting primary separation like part I was well entertained of the English council that is entertained from the council my entertainment was from the council this use is obsolete and we use by it in lieu of it. Now see, you might be thinking, well, see, it's of the Lord himself. Our faith is of him. Meaning that it's on him. He is the reason why we have faith. Get it? He is the reason. He is the cause. He is the cause of our faith. It's not that the Lord is giving us his actual faith. But he is the cause, the reason, the source of. Get it? 
Get it! This does of right belong to us. That is, from right do de gere, whatever that is. Or title proceeds from right. The chariot was all of cedar. That is, made from cedar. So we say, made of gold, made of clay. An apple application corresponding with our modern use of from. Manufactured from wool or from raw materials. Hence we say, cloth consisting of wool. This is a scheme of his own devising. That is, from his own devising or device. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That is, from the ability as the source of action. See, right there, the, the source of our faith. He is the source of it. He, you know, we're given, you know, he is our, he, he's our everything. Okay? It's not that he is giving the faith himself. No, it is our answer to his grace. Okay? Because again, if he was the one giving us the faith itself, then we would be a robot. We would be a robot. And if it is, then why are we still sinning? Okay? Of happy, he has become miserable. That is, from happy, from being happy, he has passed to being miserable. Of necessity, this must prove ruinous. That is, from necessity, as the cause or source of a hundred, of a hundred take fifty. That is, from a hundred, or out of a hundred, from, a, from among a hundred. Or of sometimes implies a part or share. It is a duty to communicate of those blessings we have received. Franklin. From is then the primary sense of this pre preposition. A sense retained in off, in off. The same word differently written for distinction. But the sense is approximately lost in many of its applications. As a man of genius. A man of courage a man of rare endowments, a fossil of a red color, or of a hexagonal figure. He lost all hope of relief. This is an, this is an, uh, uh, eh. this is an affair of the cabinet. He is a man of decayed fortune. What is the price of corn? We say that of, in these uh, and similar phrases, denotes property or possession making of the sign of the genitive or possessive case. These applications, however, all proceed from the same primary sense. That which proceeds from or is produced by a person is naturally the property or possession of that person. Meaning what? Our faith. As the son of John, and this idea of property in the course of time would pass to things not thus produced, but still bearing a relation to another thing. Thus we say, the father of a son, as we as the father of, as the son of a father. Does that mean that I'm the father? <laughs> you see? In both senses, other languages also use the same word, as in the French, di del, I'm not even going to mess with that, and Italian, di del, of then, of then has one primary sense, from departing, issuing, proceeding from, or out of, and a derivative sense denoting possessing, possession or property, meaning faith of Jesus, it's not his faith, but he is the source of our faith, meaning he is the one that we are believing on. It's all on him. It proceeds from us, but it is of him, meaning that he is the one that we are putting it on. Okay? For who he is. God the Father. Faith in Jesus, what he has done. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. Okay? Right? Because, like I said, if it was, ah, 
actually the actual faith of Jesus himself that dwells in me or in you, brother, then why are we still sinning? Why are we still sinning? Now, Matthew chapter 9, one verse, verse 29. Then now, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, but we're just going to read this to read this. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Your faith. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law is still binding, yes. Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. And he said unto them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Faith in your faith? But see, if the faith you have isn't yours, where is your faith? <laughs> and they, being afraid, wondered, saying, What? And we're saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. Verse 8. Just one verse. Just one verse. Don't worry. We'll get into some deeper stuff. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. Uh, verse, Romans 1. Verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the world. Well, if it were Christ's faith in the saved, actually his faith, then why does Paul say your? Why doesn't he say, why doesn't the scripture say, I, first I thank God, thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that Christ's faith is spoken okay all right first Corinthians chapter 2 first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 one verse first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 uh, let, let, let's read verses 4 and 5. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, like demonstrated you to what our brother sent me, but, dem but in demonstration of the capital S spirit and of power, that your faith, your faith, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith. Your faith. Um, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 now. Verses 12 on to verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 12 on to verse 20. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Your faith? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Meaning, they haven't been paid for yet. Then they also which are fallen asleep, dead, in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become 
the first fruits of them that slept. Hmm. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, our faith, okay, our faith, dear, dear saints, has a fulfillment. You know that? Okay? Because during the um, kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Faith is null and void in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you're going to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne during the kingdom of heaven. So faith has an outcome. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Uh, or is that 2 and 4? Let me see. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Ah, it is verse 24. Uh, let's read verses 21 on to 24 in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now he which, is, which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, meaning sealed us, who hath also sealed us, see, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Capital S. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul, that to spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but our helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. And uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 10, one verse, verse 15. Now, okay, uh, let's read 14 on to verse 15. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not out not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased. But if it's Christ's faith, how is it increased then? That we should be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. Let's read 16 to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready at, to your hand, to our hand. Interesting. Now, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. <laughs> Verses 13 on to verse 15. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that, after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that holy, capital S, spirit of promise, once saved, always saved, eternally secure, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Your faith. Our faith is the answer to God's grace. Because if it wasn't our faith, as these guys are saying, then God is forcing it on us. And God does not operate that way. There will be the free will uh, things in the description box for you. If you don't want to watch them, that's your problem. Okay, Philippians chapter 2, one verse, verse 17. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice of your service, and, 
Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Your faith. I thought it was Christ's faith. His actual faith in us. He's, he's who our, he is the object of our faith. That's what of Christ means. Not that he is giving us the faith himself personally. Because then we would be a robot. Okay? And God doesn't want robots, people. Okay? He, he doesn't want a robot. And if it is the way, that, that's Calvinism. That is veiled Calvinism. Now, Colossians 2, verses, let's read on to verse 8. Colossians 2, 5 on to verse 8. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Well, okay, it says, joining and beholding your order and the, st and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Okay? As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? All right. Now, uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 8. Just one verse. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. And now, let's read chapter 3 from 1 Thessalonians. Check this out. Check this out. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto, for verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that ye have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distresses by your faith. Hmm. <clears throat> for now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord for what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith if our faith is Christ's actual faith then what would be lacking in it? Bloop. Hello? Hold your place here. Second Timothy. Okay, Second Timothy. Oh, you know it, brother. Second Timothy, chapter 2, 11 on verse 13. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to ourselves and to the world, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. 
If we deny him, he will also deny us. That does not mean salvation. Okay? Again, 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 people, God is not holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do anything. It doesn't work that way. Okay? What is this talking about? Um, if we deny him scripturally, we deny walking the way he wants us to walk today, according to the scriptures, he can deny us grace, mercies, kindness, provision, peace, but not our salvation. This has nothing to do with salvation, where it says, if we deny him, he also will deny us. No, it's not talking about salvation. Because we go to him his way, we, we already read it. We're once saved, always saved. No, it's the, you can, he can deny you so many other things. He won't deny you his, uh, his salvation. Because it's not yours, it's his. If you go his way. See how that works? So this has nothing to do with salvation. Other things. Continue. If we believe not, yet he abideth faith, he cannot deny himself. Oh boy. Oh boy. If there's a saint out there who would have the stones to look you in the eye and say that my faith has never waned, I've never had a lapse in my faith, Not in faith that the Lord is our salvation, but faith that you're actually saved. Hmm? Faith that the Lord, who has never let you down, might let you down in this. Hmm? Back in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, Verse, let's pick up at verse 9. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts, unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Just one verse. Uh, let, let, let's read. Uh, let's read. Uh, let, uh, let's yeah, let's read verses one on to verse four. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalon Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that, you, that ye endure. Now, James chapter 3, uh, James 1, James 1, verse 3. James 1, verse 3. 1 on to verse 3. How's that? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Where are the twelve tribes today? Pinpoint them. Not even the Hebraic Jews can do that in its totality. Book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh <laughs> patience. See, here's the thing. 
Salvation being made right with God never in Scripture is coerced. So what makes Calvinism so dangerous? Which is why when atheists hear about Calvinism and they see idiots like that cross-dressing Calvinist justifying sin, well, hey, I'm elect. I can do this. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing it. But hey, I'm elect. I can get away with it. <laughs> I can't believe you would, would promote such a guy. <laughs> but see, being right with God, salvation was never is never coerced. And if you're saying that the faith that you are exhibiting is faith that is actually of Jesus himself, meaning he's the one doing it, you're, you're a robot. And don't you have lapses? No. Oh, really? So then you're more than you're a little Christ, huh? First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 9. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. That's not the Calvinistic elect. Okay? God elected the way of the cross. You go the way of the cross. You have gone the elected way of the cross. That's what that means. It's not what Calvin taught. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through a sanctification of the capital S Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of Christ's faith, you reading along with me? That the trial of your faith, and see, Think about this. These guys saying that you're, well, you, it's, it's Christ's faith. How does that serve as a testimony when these idiots uh, make a mockery of God in the first place and don't rightly divide the word of truth? That, that does reek of hyper-dispensationalism, which we're going to touch on in another video this week, Lord willing. Okay, <laughs> Dear brother sent a video by that wicked Les Feldick, which I haven't watched that yet, dear brother. I haven't. I, 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 <laughs> but that, never mind, that's another video. But let's continue. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. If it's Christ's faith, why does it need to be refined? Why does it need to be tried? Wouldn't it be 110% perfect all the time? To think about this. Okay? Whom have ye not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our faith has an end. It's Jesus Christ. Because there's going to be a time when faith is null and void. You don't need faith in eternity. Okay? Listen, you people. Don't believe these free grace, easy believism devils. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it is not by grace through faith. It is faith in works. 
They're telling you that so you will take the mark and be damned to hell. That's why they're telling you that. Don't believe them. Please, don't believe them. But see, our faith has an end. And who is the object of our faith? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith of Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Okay? Now, skip to verses 18 on to verse 23 in 1 Peter chapter 1. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yes, Christ never sinned. So if the faith that you claim you have is actually Christ's faith itself, then why are you still sinning? Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying, obeying the truth through the capitalist spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, seeing that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, of incorruptible, by the lowercase w, word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Word of God. Scripture. Okay? Now, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 8. Shimon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us unto, called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, adding, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance <laughs> patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 7. <laughs> Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that be, is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. And this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God, excuse me, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Born again. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even Christ's faith, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, 
even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the capital S Spirit that beareth witness, because the capital S Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the capital W, Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. That's nonsense. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 16. Therefore, oh, excuse me, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the Catholic spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, one capital S spirit. There's only one God. Even as ye are called, in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, faith on Jesus Christ, which is the faith of Jesus Christ. You see how that works? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one identification. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Not in unsaved people. This is Ephesians 4, talking to us saints. Okay? All right? It's not that lost people are saved, they just don't know. That's heresy. Watch out for that, okay? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, and he's quoting uh, Psalm 68, verses 18 on to verse 20. You look that up on your own, okay? Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended... What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Why? Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Like them guys with them, what I read you earlier. That's, that's, that's deception that's, wow, man. Wow. Wow. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 on to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 on to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 and verse 12. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same capital S Spirit. 
and there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. God's got a variety. God has me doing this. God has some of you doing other things. But it's all for what? The edifying of the body of Christ and to be ambassadors for the Lord. Okay? And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the capitalist spirit is given to every man to profit with them. Okay? And that manifestation, how we live our lives. At a gunpoint. For one is given by the capitalist spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. Ah, see, see, it's, it, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. To another faith by the same spirit. To another faith. So what? That guy has the faith of Christ and I don't? But yet I'm saved? You know, there are brethren out there whose faith can be an example for us. Okay? You can lack faith in a situation and the Lord can comfort you and assure you through the scripture. Okay? All right? Okay? Come on. To another faith by the same spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same capital S spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same capital S spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members. And all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So, this teaching that the faith that we have is not of ourselves, but it is actually of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Calvinistic. That is Calvinistic. And it is very dangerous. So, that is going to be it for this video. Uh, I do believe we have demonstrated through the scripture that... Um, these devils are twisting what the faith of Jesus Christ actually is. Okay? All right? It means that he is to be the object of our faith. He is our source of faith, meaning that he is the one that we are believing on, that we have put everything on, and our faith in him is that he has fulfilled what the scripture said he was going to. The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Because people, if it's not your faith, but Christ's faith, then that is a God who forces you to be elect or non elect. And as an atheist rightly said, when encountering the Calvinism of today especially? Who would want to serve a God like that? Who would want to serve a God who elects, who elects people to go to hell and elects people to be saved and that election of being one of the elect gives them the right to live in sin and be a cross-dresser and boast about it? See? Again, again, again. Brethren, people, people. 
Amos. Amos chapter 8. How? how? 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. These, these Christians in their phallus houses, they're, they're not even reading their Bibles. Bibles come from Rome. Okay? They're not even reading their Bibles. They are hardly hearing the words of the Lord. Scripture. And that has been happening. That has been a conditioning process. That has been happening for centuries. But more so of late, the water wearing away the stones. Because how in the name of Hades can people get away with this? They can get away with it because there is a people that exists today. Generations that have come, that have departed from the Lord, not knowing the scriptures, not even knowing a Bible, and can be duped just like that. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from, no from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Yea, yea hath God said, Oh, the, 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 the best manuscripts, the oldest are the best. Oh, give me a break. Brother, thank you for this. Uh, this was a really interesting topic to get into. And uh, that, that, was, um, yeah, that, that was something. That was, uh, I'm telling you, the, the level of this deception that's happening today is full of wonder. I mean, it really is. You, you, you got to, it's like, wow. It's so subtle. And see a Christian going to a building. A Christian, even a King James Bible-believing Christian, are being, who are being led, led along and not searching the Scriptures themselves. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, questions... Leave them, uh, got email, go ahead. And also remember there are other brethren out there who can answer your questions if you leave one. Okay, so thank you for watching this. If you do, please keep us in your prayers. Love you. We'll see you in the next video.